All right, in this video, we're going to be working on circuits, and we're going to address these two standards, um, CIR1 to arrange a simple circuit, identify basic components, determine their functions and roles, and identify series or parallel. We won't get to this part until the next video, but we're also going to define, analyze, and determine the voltage, current, and resistance of a component the series circuit and parallel circuit using Ohm's law. So we're going to start addressing these two standards in this video as we start to begin looking at electric circuits. So an electric circuit has three basic components. It has some, a voltage source, it has a path for electrons to flow, and it has something for those electrons to flow through. And so these are three quantities, or these three things represent the basic components of a circuit. Okay, so voltage source, you could think of maybe like a battery. The path for the electrons to throw f flow through. This is, by the way, a symbol for a battery. Okay. You have the path for the electrons to flow through, so like a wire. Okay. And then something that resists or slows them down. So anything that you connect to a battery is going to be something that kind of slows those electrons down. Um, when we're doing, when we're practicing and learning, a typical one we use is a light bulb. So let's say there's a little light bulb. So here we have a simple circuit, okay? And the battery is what we call a voltage source, okay? It provides a voltage, which you could think of a voltage as like a hill. So if you've ever seen like a ski slope or something like that, they have something called a ski lift that lifts skiers to the top of the hill so they can then ride back down the hill. So a battery or vo voltage source is kind of like the ski lift. It's taking, a battery basically takes electrons and separates them, creating positive ions at one end and extra electrons on the other end. And so charges attract each other. So these electrons want to go here to where the positive ions are but there's a separation here in the battery and so the only way for them to get back around is by completing the circuit and allowing them to flow. Um, now, so the analogy we use for battery is like a hill. So we're taking these electrons and raising them up this hill and then they have to kind of flow down to the bottom, okay? And so the um, you could think of like this light bulb as the hill itself and the steepness of the hill. Okay, so the more difficult it is for the electrons to flow, the less steep the hill. Okay, and the easier it is for them to flow, the steeper the hill. And so, what that means is if the electrons are skiers, if you have a really gradual slope, they're going to go slowly, but if you have like a really steep slope, they're going to go really fast. Okay, and this is basically the relationship between voltage and current and something we call resistance. So we're going to say that current is how fast the electrons are flowing. Okay, and, and actually there's a flaw to that, which we'll talk about later. We're going to call resistance basically how much we're resisting the flow of the electrons. And then battery is just our voltage source. And so the symbol for current is I, okay, the symbol for resistance is R, and the symbol for a voltage source is V. And there's a, a simple mathematical relationship here in that if you increase voltage, you increase current, but if you increase resistance, you decrease current. And so we can say that V divided by R is equal to I or current. So voltage divided by resistance gives us the current. Bigger voltage, more current. Bigger resistance, less current. Okay? And this is the basic fundamental relationship of an electric circuit. And now we can actually explore it. Okay? And we'll talk about the importance of having the different components. Okay? So here's a basic electric circuit. When I connect it, you see that we have electrons flowing and we have this light shining brightly. Okay, so what we can do here is we can actually show the uh, values of these things. Okay, so we have this, the resistance of this bulb is 3 ohms, 
and the voltage of this battery is 9 volts. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually calculate what this current is. And here's how it works. So if we use this equation here, the unit for resistance you saw is ohms. That's the standard unit for resistance. The standard unit for voltage is volts. And the unit for current is amps. And so we could say, okay, well that battery had a voltage of 9 volts. It experiences a resistance of 3 ohms which means the electrons have a speed or current of 3 amps. Okay, and that's how fast they're flowing. Okay, and so now, if you think about it, we can change the speed of those electrons by changing the voltage here. So if we make the voltage be less, those electrons are going to slow down. Okay, so the are going more slowly. The light is actually more dim, you can see. Um, Let's change it again, so that was 3.75. If we increase it all the way up to 25, or to 20, you can see they're going faster. And as we slow it down, as we decrease it, they slow down. To the point, if we have zero volts, if there's no voltage, the electrons don't flow. Okay, and the reason for that is because there's no, um, there's no voltage source. There's nothing lifting them up. If they're always at the same level, they're never going to move. Okay, and so that's why we have to have that voltage source. Okay, the second thing that we have to have is something to use them, some, something with resistance, basically. Okay, so now if you watch this, this is the thing that resists the flow of electrons. You'll see that if I increase this value, they're going to rapidly slow down. And I can make this really, really high resistance but they're still going to be flowing very slowly. I don't know if you could see, but even with this very high resistance, they flow very slowly. But having resistance is really important because something has to slow those electrons down. If you look at this equation, we have an R right here at the bottom, okay? Well, if you make R really, really small, then I is going to basically approach infinity because the smaller R gets, the closer you get to dividing by zero, which is, um, I mean, the closer you get to that value, you're basically dividing by infinity. And that gives us a problem here. And let me show you what that problem is. So if we limit, or if we decrease the resistance, you're going to see that we get a faster and faster flow of electrons. Okay. And as we gradually slow it down, they get faster and faster. Okay. So now they're going pretty fast, even faster. They're going really fast now. If I put this to zero, we basically have broken the simulation. So the battery catches on fire. These electrons are essentially moving at an infinite speed, which is impossible. And so what ends up happening is things like the battery and the wire themselves have to be there to kind of slow down the electrons on their own, and that causes things to get really hot. So when you're building circuits, you want to be careful that there's always something there to resist the flow of electrons so that you don't create what we just saw there, which is called a short circuit, okay, which it can be dangerous if you're, if you're depending on the equipment you're using. With the stuff we're using, it shouldn't be a problem but we still want to avoid it so we can protect the batteries okay so we have our three components our voltage source uh, something to use those electrons and then we have something here for those electrons that travel through if we got rid of this then the electrons wouldn't travel anymore so they need a complete path to flow through in order for them to flow okay so these are kind of the basics of an electric circuit we're going to do a little bit more about Ohm's law and then we'll wrap the video. So I, I just mentioned it. This relationship I was talking about here is called Ohm's law. So V over R equals I, the relationship between voltage, current, and um, resistance. Okay. And we can do just some quick um, examples here. And, and actually, so I is measured in amps. Sometimes we're going to be using milliamps, which is one thousandth of an amp. 
because this is more what we deal with with everyday electronics and when we're building these circuits it's more what we're going to be dealing with okay so let's say that we had a voltage source of three volts and let's say that we wanted a current of 200 milliamps the question would be how much resistance do we need here and so we could solve this equation for resistance by swapping these out right here so that would become 3 volts over 200 milliamps would be equal to R and if we divide those 200 milliamps is the same thing as 0.2 amps and so 3 divided by 0.2 is going to be I believe um, 15 ohms so if we have a resistance of 15 ohms it would slow that current to 15 or to 200 milliamps okay so let's make another circuit here let's say in this one we want we have a voltage source of 3 volts and let's say that we have a resistance that we're going to connect it to a resistance of um, let's say 30 ohms okay well what then will be the current through this circuit go ahead and solve for that well if we use this equation V over R equals I we can say okay that's 3 volts over 30 ohms gonna give me I and so I will be equal to 0.1 amps or 100 milliamps okay so pretty basic let's do one more okay let's say that we have a, a circuit where we want to we have a resistance of 100 ohms and we want there to be a current of let's say 2 amps so a very high current circuit here how much voltage would we need to power this circuit okay well V over R equals I so we're solving for V this time we have 100 amp or 100 ohms to provide 2 amps of current this is a lot of current by the way and we get 200 volts okay which is a pretty high voltage alright now to wrap this up just a couple of things to think about your um, a typical AA battery is 1.5 volts of um, yeah it has a voltage of 1.5 volts um, your cell phone when you power it it runs on 5 volts okay the um, voltage coming out of the wall if you were to measure it is somewhere around the range of 110 to 120 volts okay and we have a Van de Graaff generator which we'll see at some point this semester that provides 200,000 volts okay so here are some everyday voltages okay the current that your phone draws when it's charging is about probably um, probably like one to two amps of current to charge your phone um, and when your phone is operating it's going to be a lot less than that because you'll notice that your phone can last a lot longer than it takes to charge okay so just some things to think about to wrap up this video okay please let me know if you have any questions